Hey, what's up, guys? Back with another stream, this time with a different plane. Been flying that SR-20 for quite some time. Decided to mix it up a little bit today. Got the Aerobasque Eclipse 550 NG General Aviation Jet. Yeah, just picked this up today on X-Plane Org. Black Friday special saved uh, 12 bucks on it, which was a little bit of a gamble because I didn't know how it would be in VR, but uh, I'm going to go through that today, and it turns out it's pretty damn good in VR and uh, saved a little bit of money, so $28 for this, um, I think it's pretty damn reasonable. So thanks for joining the stream, guys. I appreciate it, and i um, just going to do a quick route in uh, FS Economy, which is one of the reasons why I bought this, uh, this jet to uh, use an FS economy. Still have to learn the systems a bit, so might uh, make a few fumbles in the cockpit, but uh, hopefully <laughs> we'll get there safe. I think we will. So anyway, let me turn this music off here. Anyway, guys, again, I appreciate you guys joining. Make sure you subscribe to Bambino Games and hit that like button on this uh, stream. I'd appreciate it if you do that. But if you do subscribe, Hit the little bell icon and you'll get notifications as to when I put up a new video or when I stream or whatever. But here we are. We're looking at the, um, the Eclipse 550. It, this, this jet's been around a while. Uh, it's very highly recommended. Some very good reviews on YouTube and other places. And uh, I have yet to see a review in VR, so I thought it would be a good time to do that. So anyway, let's check this thing out. Uh, but first, we, before we do that, I just want to show you what we're going to be doing today. And hopefully this will all work. Again, it's my first time using this plane in uh, FS Economy. You can see I'm here at um, Lemore, uh, K. Nancy Lima Charlie. And uh, we've got uh, a 69 nautical mile um, flight to Bakersfield. This is Bakersfield. Yep, Meadows at Bakersfield. And we can take six passengers in this plane, so we're going to go two, three, four, five, six. We can pick, take all these guys in this plane, which is nice. Add those to the selected, and we're going to go down here to rent this plane. All right, so now if we go to my flight, there's our plane. Oh, for some reason it won't let us... That's weird. Oh, only five seats. Okay, well, what can I say? Let's, let's um, remove that guy. So we only allowed five seats in there. Okay, that's fine. Uh, now we're going to be going, what did I say? It's going to be, well, here's our route. All right, so we're going um, Lemoore to Bakersfield. It's uh, 70, 70 miles. Pretty simple. Just want to make sure we got enough fuel here. So we're going to go five passengers and uh, let's just say it's 100 miles just to be safe. And that's telling us we're going to need 21 gallons, but I'm going to put more in there than that. Um, let's refuel this. And I could actually go up pretty high. I think I'm going to put 100 gallons in here. Uh, let's, put, uh, let's put 80 gallons in there. All right. Should that be, uh, you know what? Now nah, let's go with a hundred. Let's do, let's go with a hundred. Why not? Boom. All right, so we got a hundred gallons. That should be plenty, plenty of fuel. Uh, we got our five seats, and all goes well. We'll make probably about three grand. Not bad. But the whole intention of this is to try this uh, plane out, and uh, that's the whole idea. But before I do that, I just want to tell you about VR Aviators, the group on Facebook. Just go to Facebook and search on VR Aviators Group and uh, go ahead and join up. We've got 153 members and growing fast. And these are, it's basically a group for people that are interested in flying in VR, your PC flight simulation in VR. So give it a look and uh, some th just three simple questions you have to answer to get into the group. And if you do that, uh, we'll let you in. So anyway, make sure you check that out on Facebook. All right, so back to the tarmac here. Craig, how you doing? Thanks for joining the stream. I appreciate everybody. Thanks for joining the stream. Uh, now I am in VR. I'm using Oculus Rift, so I'm not going to be able to see the chat when I when I go inside the plane here and get things going. Uh, but uh, let me let me do that. So here we're inside the cockpit now. 
looks very very nice in VR very nice in VR uh, let me just uh, get myself situated here okay um, let's check the frame rates first we're getting 18 that's a little lower than I thought probably because we're running oculus mirror and a couple other things and um, not sure why but uh, usually I've been getting in the 20 in the mid 20s with this plane but uh, oh well so let's go to flight plan you have this uh, was a GNS 750 I think it is uh, don't don't quote me on that I'm still reading the manual uh, but you have uh, full uh, glass cockpit here you've got your PFD here all the functions you need for that and you've got your MFD over here which uh, will show you like traffic and weather and all this all other kinds of stuff so uh, but let's go to our flight plan and we're going to go to menu and we're going to go to catalog and this is the flight we want to load right there uh, activate okay boom we got our flight plan in there which is great you can see it right there on the screen so we're going to follow that i do have to figure out how to do uh let's just see flight plan menu don't there's a way to go to cd put it on cdi hmm that's not what i want Utilities? No. Do have checklists and stuff. That's cool. We'll go over that while we're flying. Um, I did. I, uh, oh, that's flying side, giving us a little kick in and out here. Come back in. There you go. Uh, so I want to put this guy in CDI mode. Let me just go back to. Where's my thing? There. Go back there. And. Hold on, hold on, I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. I, want, I don't want it on Nav 1, I want it on CDI. I'm trying to remember how the hell to do that. Not there. There we go. So you go to maps, you go to CDI until you get GPS. So now we're on GPS. Beautiful. That's what I wanted. Because what I want to do is I'm going to do my autopilot on nav, and I want that to basically take me where the hell I'm going. I do have a map function right here so I could see the terrain. I'm not sure how to get this map over to the large MFD on the right hand side, but I guess I'll figure if, if there's an ability to do that, I'll figure that out at some other point. Right now, we, we're at, uh, I think we're about we're at uh, 240 in, uh, feet, so where it's a pretty, pretty low altitude, and we're going to be going to about 500 feet. So we don't worry, have to worry about much about terrain. I'm going to fly at about 3,000, in fact. Let me set my um, altimeter at uh, 3,000. Oh, yeah, let me set it at 3,000. Right there it is right there. Just set it to 3,000. Again, I'm just getting familiar with these systems. So I'm going to assume all, I think all my lights are on. And uh, I'm going to learn all the checklists and stuff uh, uh, once I get rolling here. Let me just check one thing out here. All right, sorry about that, guys. I got dust in my, uh, I got dust in my headset. Can't stand it when I have dust on the lens. It's really hard to see. It's like it's it's like really distracting. So I have to clean my lenses off and get the dust off. All right, I guess that's about as good as it's gonna get. All right, so um, flight plan is loaded. I'm not going to worry about radio comms or anything like that. 
Now let's get FS Economy loaded up. And we're going to be good to go here. So go to FS Economy. Hopefully this will work. Open FS Economy. Log in. We're logged in. It said Star Flight. Boom. All right, good. So we got that. That means that all works. So just now we're, you guys can't see this, but we're in route and it, it recognized the plane, which is perfect. And uh, we've got 100 gallons of gas and we're good to go. So let's, uh, let's light this candle. Let's see. Hopefully the frame rates will improve as we get up in the air. Uh, where's my gas? My gas is, ooh. Yeah, it gives me it gave me 87 gallons. That's weird. It's supposed to have 100 gallons. All right, let's um, let's uh, let's go. Find our runway. Now I think you could do like charts and stuff in this too. Now I'm using the uh, my flight stick to control the plane, so. That should be fun. I don't. I have no idea where I am in this airport, but I want to take off to the uh, to the east. So I'm going to assume that uh, we're heading to a <laughs> heading to a runway this way. It's a naval air air uh, sorry air base. So I could actually pretty much take off anywhere. Looks like I have a runway coming up there. I'm going to want to set the flaps. There's two there's two flap settings on this plane, takeoff and landing. So the first click is uh, takeoff, TO. You can see it just came up there on the display. So we're going to do that one. And we'll use this runway right here. Yeah, I'm not sure why the frame rates are a little bit staggering. They usually, but when I was... Flying this plane before, they were quite good. All right, let me just see where the hell I am here. Is that a runway there? Which way is she going? Uh, I want to go down this way and take off the other way. Let's do that. Got some great sounds. I'm not using the X XP Realistic. I'm just using the sounds from uh, from the uh, Arabesque system. I did do some adjustments to make sure those uh, were okay. But I've I've landed this plane a couple of times today. I just bought it today, so it's really my first time using this guy. I can tell you, it looks great in VR, it really does. There's a shot of it in VR right there. So pretty easy to use the, um, uh, you know, sky, ve sky vector and um, transferring the plan in like that. So that was pretty easy to do. I, could probably, I think I'm going to ramp on right here. There should be enough space for me to go. So I'm going to get to. I'm going to learn how to use the flight planner in the cockpit and stuff as we go along here. We're going to assume we have clearance shake off for our trip here there's our runway nice wide runway naval runway hopefully we've got enough length here should I moved down pretty far all right let's turn her around Yeah, 
and there we go beautiful okay stop there set parking brake brake set okay that's good one more chance to try to clear clear out this freaking dust out of my headset Never put liquid on your uh, Oculus Rift. Ah, it's still in there. Damn it. All right, I'm going to have to just put up with it. All right, check our frame rates. Oh, 24, 23, good. Maybe it's because we were sitting in front of that uh, structure there, but that's right where we want to be. All right, good. So we're going to be picking up our, our I'm going to go to 3,000 and uh, fly our heading down. We'll talk about this plane as we get up there. Let me see if I can get some cabin lights on here and stuff where's the lights uh cabin okay and let's see we got everything on here good we got our lights on we got our strobes on we got navs on Good to go, baby. Let's light this candle. Alright, engines N1, N2 coming up. Don't want to blow the engine. We got 90%. Release the brakes. And there we go. Got the flaps set. We're all set to go. Probably put the yaw damper on. Make it a little easier to steer. And we should be good right there. Let's go. There we go. Nice. Rotate. Let's get the flaps up. Gear up. What I like about this is this the flight stick moves um vertically as the plane moves so you move the plane down flights move the flight six down plane moves down move back to center moves up it doesn't like hold its position like uh, some of the other planes so that's really nice i love the way that works i'm going to trim down here a little bit just picking up speed and just slowly ascending up all right Let's get our autopilot on, on nav, and I'll have to answer that in a second. Oops. going to go to our altitude which is uh well that's 1700 that's a little low but i think we'll I think actually we'll be okay there we'll hang right there 17 actually we can do altitude change go up a little bit if i'm doing this correctly take it up to 25 and now we should go up to 25 I just used the altitude change, change it to 25. That was quick. It'll take me to 2574 and should level off right there. Beautiful. All right, so we have our GPS vectors all set. I'm just going to try to set my, I don't see the flight flight plan. Oh, there it is. So ETA, okay, so 13 minute, I see, good. So it puts it right there on the MFD, 46 miles. That's good. It's got all that information right there. It doesn't put it here, though. Although I probably could get it up on the PFD. Anyway, I'm going to have to learn all these systems. That's for sure. 
Swedish Viking, how you doing? Guys, give me one second. I just got to check something. All right, guys, sorry about that. Yeah, so um, just want to do a description of what I'm seeing in the cockpit. For those of you who don't fly in VR or don't have this plane, um, I can tell you that everything is popping out at you. The All the switches, all the controls are all three-dimensional. You look over here where you've got these, um, get my, where's my mouse? Over here we've got these metal um protectors those actually look like real metal protectors i could reach out and grab them all the switches are three-dimensional now the dials are flat for the most part except these two look like they're three-dimensional but most of this is glass cockpit anyway uh, it's very easy to read everything on the um, control panel here i go to map or if i want to um if i want to bring out the um uh, if I want to uh, bring out the comms panel, which I don't know how do I do that. I forget how I do that. Yeah, click like that or uh, audio panel. I can read everything pretty, pretty damn well. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm very, very impressed with this system and for this with this plane in VR. You know, that's kind of a thing, you, a chance you take when you buy a plane. Because, you know, most the planes are not optimized for VR. They're really optimized for 2D flying and uh, you really don't know what you're going to get right so uh, what's really cool is that um, you really feel like you're in a plane and actually you feel like you've got a lot of room like I feel like I have a lot of room like it's it's it proportionally well designed um, you know I, I don't know it just feels really good in here all the stitching you can see the stitching on the on the, the dash here I'm going to turn around here look in the back and there you can see the, the four seats in the back and the one next to me and uh, all the detail on the, on the seats themselves looks really really good so yeah I'm pretty damn impressed and like I said the frame rates just check where that is now 22 frame rates have been really really good um, I've uh, I was at K San and I was getting like in the high 20s and uh, or you know in San Diego and I was in a couple other places getting some places getting like in the 30s so very smooth operation, uh, very, um, you know, very nice, nice movement, and I'm very impressed with this plane as a VR vehicle, which is, you know, what I'm, what I'm most interested in. So, yeah, I mean, I still have to learn the systems. Um, you know, the autopilot's pretty straightforward, I've, but I've got to learn all this stuff. And uh, you can see I was fumbling around a little bit there to find the CDI to put it on GPS, but you know, like there's. Uh, all kinds of stuff you can do like you can change the screen and layout around if you want to if I wanted to see the engine parameters on this side I could do that you know or I could put them on that side so um, you've got a lot of different um, different um, choices to make you could bring your transponder up here if you want to uh, so there's a lot of capability now the one thing I haven't been able to do and I'm not sure if it's possible is to bring the terrain map on this MFD right over here. Really cool if I could have the terrain map on that one. Just easier to see than this smaller one, and I could just always use this one for, like, input and stuff. But, you know, not really totally necessary, but it would be kind of cool to have the MFD there. I think I saw pictures of it with the with the terrain map here, so I'll we'll have to check that out. But, uh, yeah, it, it's... Um, I'm very impressed with this plane, and for $28, I mean... How could you go wrong, right? How could you go wrong? So this is telling me I got eight minutes. I've got 25 nautical miles. I'm making really good time. We're flying at 258, which is a great speed, and I could actually probably fly a little faster.
I think they want you under like 290 in this plane or 300. But, uh, yeah, so they got 140 gallons of fuel. I thought I put, I thought I put 100 in it, but it says I had about 100 and, well, that's gallons per hour. I got 61 gallons. Ooh, it's burning a lot. Ooh, just flipped back into flying side there. Come on back. There we go. So that was odd because I put 100 gallons in it with FS Economy and it looked like it only put 80 in. So I'm not sure what happened there. But um, in any event, you know, we could just slow down here a little bit and reduce the fuel consumption. But again, I'm very impressed. First impressions flies really well. Very touchy with the stick. So I'm going to have to adjust the sensitivity a little bit because it is very touchy with this stick. But um, what, I, what I like about it, as I mentioned before, is when you use the stick, when you push forward to descend, it holds the attitude of the plane until you move the stick. And when you move the stick back, the plane comes up. On the SR-20, when I was using this stick, it would hold, and then I'd have to pull the stick back to get it to come back up, if you guys know what I'm saying. So it follows the vertical movement of the flight stick, which is what you want, right? Um, the la the um, aileron movement is a little bit different. Like you have to you have to bring it back to center, I believe, to get it to, to land or to, to get it to, to be centered or f fly level. Uh, it's not this. It doesn't seem to be the same. But I'm going to play around with that a little bit. But in any event, I'm impressed with the controls. As I said, they're a little bit touchy. Um, so I'm going to have to see if I can modify the uh, sensitivity. But yeah, I'm, I, I love the. I, I I really do like this plane. It's really cool. I'm anxious to get used to learning all the um, the, the feature, the systems here. I'm gonna, let's just check out plane command. Setcom one to one two three point five. C O M one set to one two three point five. So that works. That's cool. Setcom two to one two zero point zero. Setcom two to one 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 point two. C O M two set to one 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 point two. Where's that? Oh, I see. It doesn't show me. What why it didn't show me? There's my transponder. I can quickly squawk altitude like that, and I just click back and I'm, I'm there. Go to audio panel. I can see COM2. You can have separate. Okay, so you can have a mic. This is your mic selection and monitoring. So I can have the mic on COM1 and just monitor COM2, which is what I like to do when I'm in flying, when I'm in uh, FS, sorry, um, Pilot Edge. So you could listen to the seat. Uh, CTAF. So, but it only shows one of the comms on here. It doesn't show COM two for some reason. But that's okay. In any event, I, 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 I'll have to figure all this stuff out and just get used to it. You know, you you got to fly a plane a few hours before you really kind of know the systems. But again, I want to see if I can get a terrain on that. Now, if I, when I come up to here, I'm going to be about uh, eight miles out, so I probably sh I'm going to do a hand fly to ascend. ascend. We're going to have to come down 2,000 feet, but this should guide us like right in. Actually, let's try to do this. Let's try to go to um, uh, altitude change. Let's go down. Let's go down to 14. We'll go altitude change. Now this should bring us down. Hopefully, no. Not bringing us down. Right, this is going to bring us down a little bit, hopefully, here. So we're coming up to our waypoint. We'll make our turn here. And we should be good to go into uh, Bakersfield. Okay. So we're five miles, are we five miles out from the, oh, from the change, okay, from the, um, the GPS point, that's what it is. So 
still getting pretty good frame rates. It's uh, yeah, it's a lovely plane. Let's take a look at the outside. Nice, nice looking plane. Let's see what you guys have to say here. Uh... M. Temple, how you doing? Yeah, the um, it's it's that thing on the upper left hand corner is flight plan glow. Uh, sorry, sorry, flight plan go. And no, right now I don't have it visible in the cockpit with me. Um, if Fly Inside does have the ability to bring a um, uh, an image in or a window in, but I'm not, I'm just not using that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna level off here. Start to slow the plane down. So we got 13 miles in, but I'm having problems with that for some reason. Um, it's not connecting properly with X-Plane in the beta release, so uh, I've got a bug report in on that, and uh, until we get that fixed, I'm not going to be able to use the moving map. So we're going to be about 1,300 feet above here. we got 13, 11 miles out. We're starting to slow her down. Now, I don't know what the speeds are for flaps. I'm going to assu assume like 150 for this jet, somewhere around there, So, but I'm, I'm bringing her way back here. Slowing her way down. I don't think it has air brakes. We got 10 miles into Bakerfield. We should be able to see the airport. Let me just see if I can use the zoom here. Where is it? There it is. And there she is, right over that tower. We're going to go to the left runway there. All right, so I think I can hand fly this baby now. So let's do that. We take her off. Yep. All right. So now, I want to get her over here. Again, I want to. Where's my? There she is, right there. Just want to make sure I line up to the runway. You see, it's very touchy on the movements from the stick here. So. Okay, we'll stay at 1,000 for now. We're seven miles out. All right, let's go flaps to landing. It's a second flap position. Gear down. See, we got the three green right there, right in front of us. Nice indicator. Runway in sight. Slowing her down to 125, 124, 123. Keep it right around there. Probably want to land at about 100, somewhere around there. I think when I was landing before, I was like 105, somewhere around there, so. But honestly, this is the first time landing with the stick. I've been using the yoke before, so this will be my first time with the stick here. One seventeen. I don't want to go too much slower. Okay, 500. Everything moving really nicely. Nice fluid, smooth motion of the sim, which is what you want. And it's pretty surprising. One of the first, one of the people, I forget who it was in the um, in the uh, VR Aviators group on Facebook said it's amazing because all the glass cockpit and all the stuff going on in this plane that you have such really good frame rates. So it is, it's great that you would do. I don't want to get too much lower here. One fifteen. Two 
Yeah, we're just going to assume those those wires those uh, wires aren't there because they would never be there in the real world. They would never be there. We were 110. One thing I learned flying and flying these simulators are is just small movements and just be patient and be calm when you're landing. Right, we're going to flare up a little bit, start to come down. We're going to be a little high here, a little high. We've got a lot of runway. Flare her up, throttle down. That was pretty nice. I'm gonna have to turn on XP realistic to get the uh let's get our flaps up. To get the, the sound of the landing. But that was a pretty good landing, I thought, right? Pretty good landing. Stop the plane here with the brakes. I'll take that landing. The second time I've landed a plane, the first time I've landed with a stick, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. All right, let's uh, let's exit over here. Got a lot of movement at this uh, this airport. Don't hit my plane, buddy. tower. I'm just going over here. Park it right over here. So that was the uh, first FS economy flight for me with this with this jet. Like I said, I'm pretty impressed. 28 bucks. Pretty impressed. Set parking brake. Brake set. All right, let me get my FS economy off. Oh, I gotta turn the. We gotta turn the plane off. So let's uh, let's do that. Uh, how do we do that? Engine off, right? And then we would turn all our avionics off over here, right? Okay, cool. FS economy. Finish flight. All right, let me show you what we got here, guys. All right, so my flights. We finished that flight. Let's go to the log. What did we make? We made uh, 2800 bucks. Not bad for a quick flight like that. This plane, I think, can make a lot of money in FS economy. I really do. It's, um, you know, it's quick. Carry five people, um, you know been making yourself a nice buck with it so i'm pretty happy with that um see if you guys got any questions well, thanks swedish viking i appreciate that uh good day paul how you doing from the land down under you like flying the corporate chest and can't wait to get oh you got your rift on order that's awesome that's right you're that's awesome to hear yeah you're gonna you're gonna really enjoy flying in vr it's uh it's really an incredible incredible thing 
um, it makes things so much, so much, so much cooler. And uh, actually, I think the I think the graphics on this are better in the reproduction than um, flying the SR twenty, but I'm not sure about that. But anyway. This was a fun plane to fly. I definitely re recommend this from, oh, change from Track IR. Yeah, you'll, there's no comparison. Track IR is great for 2D. It's great, but your eyes are always looking at the one screen. Here, you're turning your head and looking in different directions. You're gonna notice it, Paul. If you haven't flown in VR already, you probably have, but you're gonna notice it when and most when you're landing, because when you're landing, you, you have a complete, especially when you're doing like pattern landing, you have complete visibility of uh, everything, which is um, makes it so much so much easier to land. So much easier to land. So, yeah, good luck with that. And um, yeah, if you subscribe to the channel, let us know. Let me know in the comments somewhere how you're making out. Or actually, on if you're on Facebook, um, I'm not sure if you're part of the VR Aviators. Hopefully, you are. If you are, let us know how things go. And um, you know, we'd love to hear your story. But um, now I plan to do my own livery with this plane. Um, oh, you already tried? Okay, cool. Uh, I plan to do my own livery with this plane. Uh, there, unfortunately, it doesn't have a paint kit available, um, so you have to work with PNG files. I may see if I can um, commission someone to uh, to design a Bambino Games um, livery for this plane. That's what I'm hoping to do. So we'll see. Uh, how much for a VR system? Well, it's um. It's really two things. It's the VR. I mean, you can pick up today, right today, they're having specials, at least in the U.S. Uh, you can buy an Ocul Oculus Rift system for $349. But you need a pretty powerful PC to run that. You're going to need like an i7-6700, somewhere around there or above, I would recommend. You're going to need a 1070 GPU. You're going to probably need, I would recommend, 32 gig of memory, but at least 16 gig. So you're gonna have to have yourself, you know, a decent PC. It's probably gonna cost you at least like around twelve hundred bucks. So if you figure on the PC and VR, you're probably talking fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars to get into it in a, in in a good way with a solid PC. That's gonna give you some room for growth. But yeah, um, that's about what it's gonna cost. Have I tried the B seventeen yet? No, I have not tried the B seventeen yet. Is that a military plane? I'm assuming that it is. Um, I really don't fly military. I'm flying mostly GA planes like this one and uh, the SR-20. I fly a lot, and uh, sometimes the the um, sometimes the um, the Cessna C-172. You're running a 970, 32 gig i i5, 3550 um, frames look about the same with your Vive. Okay. Well, that's pretty good on a 970. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. It's, it's. Um, I think the memory has a lot to do with it. I think that really helps out. And with, you know, with X-Plane, if you're running X-Plane, you need a solid CPU because right now X-Plane's pretty CPU-centric until they go to Vulkan. While they're on Open, um, OpenGL, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be pretty, uh, you know, pretty CPU dependent. 64, 32 bit doesn't matter. I would recommend 64 bit. Um, X plane is 64 bit. So I would recommend that for sure. But yeah, so I'm hoping to do a livery of this plane and fly it a lot more in, um, in FS economy and then in, in um, pilot edge as well. Now, the thing is, I'm going to have to fly into some of the, into the, in the into the, uh, towered airports. So I'm going to have to, um, um learn more about that and get up in the cat rating so i can do that kind of thing yeah i'm missing the moving map too unfortunately i've got to get that corrected there seems to be seems to be some bug in either flight plan go or x plane and they're not talking to each other i've tried a bunch of different things and i just have not been able to make that happen so hopefully hopefully uh that'll happen soon so in any event guys listen i appreciate you guys stopping by this was just a quick a quick look, a VR look at uh, the uh, Eclipse 550 uh, NG jet. Um, I'm really, really impressed with this plane. As even from, uh, especially from a VR perspective, it's on sale today. I think it's only today, um, so you can get it for twenty eight dollars. It's normally forty dollars, so you're going to save yourself twelve bucks. Uh, I'm not, you know, I don't get any money for, from buying it or whatever, but uh, if you guys are interested in this plane, 
Today's a good day to get it. Do a bit of how uh, how to set up a VR uh, set up VR at home. Um, yeah, you know what, uh, Striker, it's um actually pretty easy. Um, as long as you have a PC, if you buy an Oculus Rift, it's so plug and play. It it really doesn't really even make sense to do a video on it. Um, it it's it's you know it because once you get your Rift and or your Vive, um, it's they just guide you through it step by step, and it's really, really, really easy to do. So it would be kind of redundant to do a video on that. Um, I do have a video on the PC that I built. It's uh, you know sometime last summer, uh, not this previous summer, summer, summer before, uh, where I when I built that. So, uh, but uh, you know, there's plenty of videos on building VR PCs. This channel has a good yes. I have a, I have a setup guide for. Uh, fly inside um there's a video if you search through my videos there's a um uh, well let me see if i can find it i can post the um i can post the video for you give me one second here guys uh it's a pretty popular video that i have uh one second one second um um Okay, this video here. Oh, stop. Sorry about it. Stop. Stop. All right, the video I'm posting here. This is the uh, setup guide for using a uh, fly inside X Plane 11 and uh, Oculus Rift. So this will help you out if you're just getting ready to do that. Um. Um. Yeah, fly inside changed for me too. Uh, I, I can't fly 2D flight simulators anymore um i just can't do that sometimes i do it just to uh get some screenshots for like you know videos and stuff and i'm like oh, i don't know how i can do that that's why i i have fsw and i can't even fly fsw because it's 2d and i'm not really that impressed with fsw um fsx you can fly in vr with flying side and i do have that module but um yeah it's it's uh, once you start flying in VR, you get addicted to it. It's the way to go. Yeah, I have three sensors for my Rift, uh, two in the front and one to the side. Uh, you really, you, the three sensors are good if you're going to do, um, full room and standing game kind of thing. But, um, I really think for VR, it, the two sensors is probably good enough. But if you buy a system today, I think you get three sensors with it anyway. But I recommend three sensors. It's not that much to add another sensor. Now, I appreciate that, Swedish. I'm glad that you're learning. That's good. You love to see FSW support and fly inside. Yeah, you know what? Um, I think that would be great, but I think there would be some major, major frame issues. I, I did a v, I did a video a couple of weeks ago on FSW, and the frame rates from ultra to low are the same, or pretty much the same. It's amazing. They don't have any. It, it's it's so um, inefficient on frames that I, I don't think they're anywhere near the ability to be able to generate enough frames for you to run it in um in in vr they're not even talking about vr and the thing is i think flight simulation is really going to start to move to vr i really do believe it you know especially now i'm getting every day i get people that are asking me questions about it um in fact even real world pilots i've got i've had at least six real world pilots people that are commercial pilots um person that flew 777s person that threw 737s uh, I think like six six people have contacted me, asking me questions about setting up a VR system, and what's a good where they can find a plane so they can practice at home, which is pretty in, pretty insane, right? Commercial pilots using VR systems to improve their ability, which is really cool. So I just see, and I think you guys would agree that um, VR would uh, is is really going to change things in in flight simulation. Yeah, I have tried the helicopter in VR, M uh, Temel, in FSX. I flew the Robinson, was it 22, whatever that is, helicopter in FSX. And that was pretty astounding. And that's an FSX. So um, 
at some point I'll get a helicopter or an X-plane uh, and probably want a simpler one just to fly around and try that around. But yeah, it's really, it is cool to do that. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, VR is the future, and I think it's it's just going to get better and better. And, uh, you know, that's why I set up this uh, VR Aviators group. We were having a stream one time, and um, Donovan Young and uh, Bell Geode and a couple others were in the stream, and we started talking about it. I had an, I, I had, had an idea to set up a VR Aviators group, and I ran it by them. They were like, yeah, we should do it. And Donovan uh, Young actually came up with the, the name VR Aviators Group, so... Uh, and it's been pretty successful. A couple of weeks, we've got almost 150 people in the group and more growing every day. So and it's a great place to exchange information. I think the 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 summit moment is going to be about a month from now when um, Laminar is scheduled to release native VR for X-Plane 11. It's going to be 11.20. And... Uh, as soon as that beta comes out, I'll have it up and running and looking forward to testing that out and seeing the differences, you know, what it's going to be like not having the fly inside module in there. Um, if that's going to improve things, hopefully it will improve things. I'm hoping that it's going to improve the visual effect inside the, the headset because you don't have fly inside reprojecting anymore. Because uh, I have to believe something's lost in the reprojection even though they do a great job and they've carried us through, you know, the VR people, people that are like me that are inter interested in VR flight sims, flight sim, FS, sorry, fly, fly inside has carried us through so well uh, from, for the, for this last year, right? Um, it's going to be interesting to see uh, the difference. Paul says, I have purchased FSX P, uh, P3D version 4 X.11, but I've purchased fly inside for FSX to begin with. All right. You love uh, the Orbix scenery, use FSX, and uh, currently fly on VATSIM using P3D and X-Plane uh, as a sand pit at the present. Gotcha. Uh, that's fine. You're going to find a big difference in X-Plane 11 in the nav and comms, especially, well, comms you're, you're already used to with VATSIM, but the nav side, I think, in X-Plane is um, probably... About the same as P3D, but definitely FSX doesn't have the same nav capability as as X-Plane. I've just, you know, I've, I was an FSX flyer for many, many, many years and had Aerofly before. I had Aerofly before I had X-Plane 11. And um, I downloaded X-Plane 11 on a, you know, on a on an evaluation and downloaded a, a trial of a fly inside. Put them together because I had gotten, I had gotten a headset, you know, and I always wanted to try VR and I was just blown away. And when I did it, it just consumed all of my time. I mean, I would base, I was basically playing a lot of VR games like uh, Robo Recall and Super Hot and all those games. And it was lots of fun. But once I got hooked on X-Plane VR, I was like basically all I did. <laughs> so uh, it's really cool and I'm glad I did it. So it's good to see all you guys interested in it. It really is, it's exciting. So anyway, um, I'm going to wrap it up here. Any more questions? I'm going to have to go in a little bit. Any more questions on VR I'm, ha VR, I'm happy to answer them for you. Again, I'm hoping to get the moving map thing fixed soon because it does bother me too. It, it hurt, it's tough with navigation because, you know, it's nice to know where you are on the map so you could start your descents or whatever. Um, it's, it's, you know, makes things a little bit more difficult not having it. So I hope I can get that, that fixed pretty soon. Let's go inside the cockpit here. I got it cold and dark, but there's the back of the cockpit. You also fly RC planes be using Real Flight 8 with VR. Oh, okay. I have to check that out. You got Flight Plan Go, okay. Yeah, you can, and you can put Flight Plan Go in the cockpit with you using um, Fly Inside. Now, that's the question I have about um, native VR and X-Plane. I'm hoping they're going to allow you to import Windows. That I, I know they're going to have their own iPad thing, so you could import, so you could look at their um, navigation stuff. But I really hope that they have an import capability because I want to be able to import chat and import Flight Plan Go. So that basically I never have to come out of the headset. You know, I could just basically be in the headset the whole flight. So 
In any event, guys, that's going to about wrap it up for me. Um, I appreciate you guys checking it out on this uh, Thanksgiving Friday. Hope you guys are getting some great Black Friday deals. I know um, X Plane Org has some really good deals today. Um, this one in particular, uh, which is um, you know the the Eclipse uh, 550. But there's a bunch of other deals that they have on there. You might want to go over there and check that out and uh, see which, see if you can find that special plane that you've been looking for. But anyway, man, thanks for watching, guys. Hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. And if you do subscribe, hit that little bell icon and you'll get a notification when I'm streaming or when I put up a new video. And um, again, make sure, um, make sure you head on over to um, the, um, the VR Aviators chat group. Make sure you head on over to that and uh, sign up for that if you're on Facebook and you'll be locked into the community community that's building a VR aviator. So hope to see you over there, guys. All right, guys. Listen, have a great Friday and uh, thanks again for watching and we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.